Truck Driver here, and welcome to a brand new segment called Rideshare Stories, where I read and analyze the internet's craziest rideshare and gig life stories. If you have a crazy story, please send it my way and I'll feature it on my channel. Now let's get into it. Today's article is two years old from Autoblog, titled Wildest Rideshare Driving Experiences, Public Freakouts, Fisticuffs, and Being Asked to Break the Law. It looks like the author of this story has driven for Uber and Lyft over several years, and they're writing about their craziest stories. The article starts out by saying, driving for Uber and Lyft is usually pretty mundane. You don't get crazy passengers all that often, thankfully, because crazy passengers come with a lot of baggage. Sure, they give you good stories to tell and retell for years to come, but I'm not sure that makes up for the damage they do or pain they may inflict. That's very true. In fact, some crazy passengers put a driver's job at risk or his health in every now and then his life. Also very true. Very rarely does a driver escape a brush with a wild and crazy passenger with just a good laugh and some funny stories. Very true. These experiences usually come with some degree of pain and suffering for the driver. Now, what the author is trying to say in the story is that, yes, you know, crazy passengers do leave us with stories to tell, but they also leave us with a heightened awareness for the next passenger that may act very similar and just going through that stressful situation in itself can you know definitely change us as drivers and for a crazy passenger to put the driver in that situation it's unfair for the driver we're just here to do our job get paid move along we're not here to deal with your bullshit. so you know it's one thing if someone's having a bad day at work and they want to vet sure that's what we're here for or sometimes therapists. It is what it is. But we're not your punching bag. We're not your mom or dad. And our life and property should never, ever be left up to the rider's discretion to do whatever with. So us as drivers definitely deserve better than that. And lastly, what riders do to put drivers in a predicament is the fact that if they're acting bullish, there's really nothing in it for drivers to argue back. Now, I never recommend arguing back. But hear me out, for example, a rider gets in, curses at the driver, disrespects them, uh, wants to be a backseat driver, tell them to go different ways. Pretty much they are projecting whatever bad is going on in their life onto the driver. The driver most of the time won't say anything. I mean, I've been in situations in the beginning where I just, I just take it because I don't want to have a bad feedback, a one star um, or then the call in. And, you know, lie and say that I, you know, I was discriminatory against them because riders have done that thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of times to drivers. So drivers, for the most part, they just sit there. They just take it. They want to risk their livelihood, which is their job first. And also they don't want to escalate the situation to risk their lives because you, we just don't know who is getting in our back seat sitting behind us. But anyway, as the article continues here. Let me share a few driving stories and see if you get the idea. The first story, the author calls it the crazy, and it continues. During a ride when Uber first came to town, I picked up a foreign exchange student along with some of his friends from a bar near the college they attended. The college was having a welcome reception for all the new students. As they approached my car, I could see that he and his friends seemed a little off, and by a little off, I mean, they were drunk out of their minds. A couple of the drunks were on the sad side, while the other couple were more on the agitated side. I couldn't tell if they were going to fight or cry, but I knew something bad was headed my way. Halfway through the ride, the friend who was sitting in the back seat suddenly started freaking out. He pulled his MacBook Pro out of his backpack and started smashing it against the back window of my car. Startled, I immediately pulled over and demanded that he get out. His friends, though, were insistent that we finish the trip, and they assured me that they would take care of him and make sure he did no further damage. Nah. Out of the car immediately. Unfortunately, the cops are called. This is what riders don't understand about Uber and Lyft. Like, once you damage my car, I got to get the cops in, uh, involved. My night is over. I'm not going to make any more money. Like, this type of crap drivers have to put up with, not only is it just 
flat out disrespectful for someone else's property. But the fact that we're trying to earn a living, we're not out here because we have nothing else to do in our lives. No, we're out here earning a living and that bullshit has just got to go. Zero tolerance. But unfortunately, there are a lot of drivers out there that it's one thing to take someone's words and bullshit and just be like, you know what? I'll just de-escalate the situation. They're out of my car in a little bit. Sayonara, one star. Don't have to deal with you. Don't don't escalate it. But it's another thing if someone's going to be acting violent and damaging property. That's where drivers have to start drawing the line. But they don't. Because they're little p***s. And they're afraid to say anything. But the whole passengers are back there damaging your car. Nah, not dealing with that. The first thing I would have asked for in this situation is who's the primary passenger? Whose account is this? Who ordered the Uber? Whose phone is it on? If it wasn't that MacBook smashing asshole, then I'm going to tell their friend, like, listen, this guy's out of here. So either one of two things are going to happen. We kick him out, tell him sayonara, and we continue the ride, and we'll deal with how we're going to fix this damage because it's on you. It's on you, buddy. You let this a-hole in your car you're still financially responsible for it. Or if you want him to still go along with us, we're done, everyone out of the car. And the third option, if no one leaves, this is what I've always told unruly passengers that never wanted to get out. You can stay in the car, but I'm gonna call 911 and let them know I'm on the way to a police station. So either you can stay in the car and I'll drive to the local police or you can get the f out. All right, article continues. The guy on each side of him each held one of his arms down until we got to the destination. See, nah, uh, out of the car, man. You know, you, you don't know what that guy's going to be kicking next, spitting, like, nah, nah, man, out. Halfway there, though, that same guy broke into tears and cried his eyes out the rest of the ride. Probably more of a drunk, to be honest with you. Definitely some other drugs involved. In the end, they made it all worth my time and the rare $100 cash tip. It was a nice gesture, but I was never sure it made up for the scratches left behind on my door. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. The guy needed to, needed to go. Sorry, buddy. Like, cry on a curb somewhere else with your MacBook and tell, give someone else your tears. And I would have continued with the rest of the guys, and whoever was the primary passenger, I'd have been like, listen, I'm calling the cops. Cops are going to be called. I'm going to get your name. I'm going to get your information. And this is going to small claim civil court. You ruined my night. I'll still take the $100 because you ruined my night. I mean, shit. let's be real with all the other drivers out there, depending on when you started, you, they could have possibly, you know, two, $300 out of money. Anyway, story continues. There's always a cost to the driver for these bizarre stories. Well, yeah, that was one of the weirdest rides I had until one night when I got a call to pick up a couple from an MMA fight at the arena in town. <laughs> Picking up from an MMA fight. A lot of alcohol and testosterone involved there, man. There's probably people that are amped. It's almost like uh, when I pick up at uh, an Eagles game around here. People just don't know how to calm the f*** down sometimes. But anyway, the story continues. When I arrived at the pickup location, I saw one of the two of them standing there. A grown man and a grown woman. They looked like nice people, and I had no idea what was coming my way. Upon entering my car, they immediately started bickering. Well, we've all had those couples. Those are the mostly entertaining ones, except when the couples try to get you on one of their sides, and I'm just like, hey, listen, man, like, I'm, I'm, I'm staying neutral here. Like, I'm Switzerland. Like, I, I'm good. I'm just going to drive you to the destination. Like, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I don't get involved. I'm here to de-escalate situations, not escalate them, not get people upset. And most of the time, they're like, eh, whatever. As the article continues, they didn't want to keep their bickering private. They made it apparent before we even got out of the parking lot that they wanted to drag me into it. See? Nah. <laughs> I'm not getting into people's arguments. As a driver, if you can remember this one word, de-escalation. Let me say it again. De-escalation. No matter what. Even if someone to your face calls you the most despicable names on earth, remember de-escalation your life is never worth your pride at all you don't know these people in your back seat you don't know what they are capable of if they're carrying a weapon de-escalation the entire time now that doesn't mean being a little bitch the entire ride 
you know, assert yourself, say, no, I'm not doing that. Yes, I can do this, but I'm not going to do that. But never escalate the situation at all. Never. Anyway, the article continues. Each one of them wanted me to take their side. There were cars everywhere, and it was taking what it felt like forever just to get out of the parking lot, as usually happens during sporting events and concerts. When it was finally my turn to exit onto the street, out of nowhere, this massive white lifted F-150 comes barreling the wrong way down the street and headed straight toward my car in front of me. It stopped just before it hit it, and four guys jumped out of the vehicle and started beating the crap out of each other. See, I told you. Testosterone, MMA fight, beer. To me, that would have been a cancel if I saw that thing coming in. Nope, cancel. Plus the traffic, getting into sporting events and everything, not worth it. I mean, if passengers are smart, which probably not after going to a sporting event and having alcohol, um, most of them would just walk a few blocks down and then get the Uber ride there. So both them and the driver don't have to be stuck in traffic. But that's a story for another time. As the story continues, fortunately, the police showed up in near record time. All of this time, I was still behind the car watching the fight and fearing for my life. But at the same time, the couple in the back seat had not shut up, and they were still trying to suck me into their fight. They were going at it so hard, they didn't even notice a street brawl going on right in front of us. Now, I got a story to tell you about one time at 2 a.m. in Philadelphia. I was picking up this one passenger at this bar near Temple. If you're from the area, you know how it's very sketchy. So, bars close, most bars close at 2 a.m. in Philadelphia, and I'm going down a one-way street. And uh, it's a little bit after 2 a.m., so probably the bar kicked all these people out. There were probably 50 to 75 people fighting in the street. Like, I'm not kidding you. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. Remember, it's one way out. A car coming behind me. I popped that sucker in reverse so fast, and, and so did that truck that was coming behind me, and we just got the hell out of there. Made a U-turn and went the wrong way down a one-way street. Canceled that ride, so... Yeah, man, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Those things can definitely be scary. As the article continues, once everything finally cleared, I'm assuming the fight, I took them to their destination without saying a word. I decided after the ride, I would just head home. So I drove the 30 minutes back across town. Just as I pulled in my driveway, I noticed the grown woman had left her cell phone in the back seat. I drove all the way back across town to their location where I found them still fighting. I'm assuming he means the couple still fighting. I wasn't sure how they'd react when they saw me again, but I rang their bell and told them that I had their phone. They were so pleased they tipped me $100. No joke, it was crazy, but awesome. Well, you took the risk going back across town to drop off their cell phone, not knowing if they were going to tip. I mean, this was 2020 when the article was written, so... I don't think that there was that $15 finder fees or whatever, but I mean, God bless you. Cause at the end of the night, I wouldn't have done that. Um, I've had people leave cell phones, wallets, keys, everything in my car. Um, I just go through Uber, let them know. And then I try to meet up with them, you know, a couple days down the road, uh, especially late at night going to someone's house where, you know, there was, they were already agitated. I mean, God bless you. I wouldn't have done that, but I mean, the tip is nice, you know, a hundred bucks. I mean, if it's true. All right, the next story called The Illegal. The story starts. People don't realize, but when there is a traffic or driving law that affects Uber rides, it is ultimately up to the driver to enforce it. If the passenger requests the driver to do something that's illegal, there are no police on the scene. There is no one from Uber shaking a finger at them uh, 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 and saying, no, 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 not allowed. All of that falls on to the driver. Now, this is so true. This is actually one of my pet peeves where, as you can see, I got a sedan. I got four seatbelts. I can only take four people in the car, obviously not including myself. I hate it when, especially in college towns or when you're picking up the bar late at night and people are just cheap and drunk and they don't want to order two Ubers for their friends. I got plenty of videos on my channel about this same situation. The traffic and driving infractions fall on the driver, not the passengers. I hate that bullshit when passengers are like, oh, well, if you get pulled over, I'll pay the ticket. Nah, they're not paying the ticket. They just think you're a damn smuck. 
you're just some poor ass person out here trying to make an extra dollar and you're going to do whatever the f they say. No. Now, again, don't escalate the situation. Just tell them that, no, I have four seatbelts, four, and count out to them if they're stupid. Say one, two, three, four. That's it. That's all I'm taking. And what I tell them additionally is if I get pulled over for it, I get the ticket, the points go on my license, I can't drive for Uber or Lyft. So I don't care about your extra 10 or $20 for a risk. And then if they keep on pressing, just say, hey, look, man, give me $1,000 cash right now. And if we don't get pulled over, I give it back to you at the end of the night. They'll probably laugh and just say, you know, whatever. Another thing is car seats. This falls into the same category as car seats. First, why would you even risk your child's life with some stranger that you don't even know what their driving habits are to get in a car without a car seat? I'm talking about kids under two years old, too. I've had... I had three and four month olds. I actually, you know what? I had an infant that just got released from a hospital from an emergency room pickup. And the woman didn't think there was anything wrong with getting in the car. And I'm like, no. First, why would you risk putting your child's life in some stranger's hand? And second, those infractions fall on us. That's why those passengers just don't give two shits at all. And that falls into the same category as this, is that those passengers, they probably understand that but they don't care. They don't care about you and you can tell it in their attitude. Also the fact that they're putting you in that situation. So f them and tell them no, be assertive. Don't escalate the situation, be assertive. Just say, no, I can't do that. No, I can't do that. No, I can't do that. And if they say derogatory and belligerent things to you, which they will because they're gonna be butt hurt that they couldn't get the ride. And they're also gonna say things like, oh, well other Lyft drivers do it. Say, sorry, can't. This is my car. These are my rules. I'm not doing it. And if you ask me again, I'm going to report you to Lyft. Anyway, sorry for my tirade. The article continues. So one Friday night, I was out drinking and picking up college kids from the local bars and transporting them to other local bars. Yeah. Yeah. What could go wrong? I got a ping, and when I arrived at the pickup location, four drunk college kids got in. They closed the doors, and I thought we were on our way. So I started the trip on the app and pulled out of the parking space. The minute the car was in motion, one of the kids shouted, wait, stop. So I stopped and suddenly one of the back doors flung open and another kid piled in. See, I told you there's absolutely no respect. See, they did this on purpose. They're not stupid. Well, I mean, that's debatable because the Gen Z generation of college kids are probably the, the, the most idiotic ones to ever go to higher education. But that aside, they're they're drunk and, you know, they just think they'll get away with whatever because they got away with whatever they wanted with mommy and daddy in in society because these privileged pricks just keep on pushing the envelope. And most people are just like, ah, whatever. I don't feel like the only now as a driver, this is where you be assertive and you say, no, I don't care if it's a few blocks down the street. No, stand your ground. Don't escalate the situation don't, by meaning don't get in an argument with them. But by you saying no and being assertive, you're not escalating the situation. Anyway, as the article continues, since I wasn't drunk, though, I immediately knew that was too many kids in the back seat. So I, I think what the author is saying is that they were drunk. Maybe they didn't know. Trust me, they, they did. Um, but since the driver wasn't drunk, he, he could count. That's what I'm getting from the article. Anyway, as it continues, I'm allowed by state law to drive four passengers. Four. See? Four. Count it, stupid one, two, three, four. Maybe smack them with your hand. Say four. Could you count the four? You privileged prick, count to four. The article continues. And my state law takes that very seriously. In fact, they have cops staking out the local bars looking for this specific violation. They do sometimes. It's a little extreme, but uh, they definitely do. I uh, Westchester, Pennsylvania, they love to get uber drivers that have too many passengers in the car uh no not wearing seat belts and also stopping the pickup passengers in a no stopping standing or parking uh parking area on uh, main road so um a lot of people will say this is bs but in small towns the cops love giving these tickets and again you know those drunk college idiots that can't count the four are going to get in your car and not wear a seat belt and again i talk about de-escalation most of the time, I, I'm not going to bring up wearing a seatbelt unless someone's in the front seat. Um, they're not going to wear a seatbelt. So then you're stuck with that ticket. You're stuck paying for your drunk, idiot, four passengers 
maybe five if they sneak it in. Hundreds of dollars for each one not wearing a seatbelt. It goes on your license. You can get kicked off at Uber and Lyft, and they paid you, what, $5 for that ride because it's probably a few blocks down? Not worth it, man. Stand up for yourself. Be assertive. These are probably the stories that you see on a lot of boards and Facebook groups where people are like, oh, I got kicked off Uber and Lyft for no reason. Well, I mean, unfortunately, you put yourself in a situation where people took advantage of you. I feel bad for someone taking advantage of you, but I don't feel bad for you being a pushover and not assertive enough. Tell them no or get the fuck out of the vehicle. The article continues. I was adamant and firm in my resolution not to break the, this particular law. The penalties are really stiff and not something I needed on my driving record. Exactly. The kid in the front seat said, ah, come on, man. We're just going a few blocks and no cops will see us. See? Uh, you get that from every, every young little college punk. I said, no. He pleaded more. Please, just take us. We're almost there. Now, this is where you, you don't escalate. You don't yell. You maybe laugh at their face and count, again, one, two, three, four. Four passengers only. Four because, you know, those privileged college pricks can't count the four. But you don't escalate the situation. You tell them no. Like, hey, I'm only going to ask you one more time. Then I'm going to ask you to get out. And if you don't get the fuck out of the car, I'm going to call the cops. Anyway, as the article uh, continues, I felt like saying, if we're almost there, then why don't you just walk? There you go. But I remembered I just started the trip, which means they would now have the ability to rate me. Once a driver indicates to the app that the trip has begun, the passenger will always have the ability to rate the driver. If I hadn't pushed start when you swipe start trip button on the driver app, they couldn't have left the rating and I would have kicked them all out on the spot. I get that. And that was me years ago when I first started driving. It's just like, you know what? I want the trip. I'm going for a quest. I just want to get this over with. Like that was me the first, you know, 100 rides years ago when I first started driving. So if that's you in the beginning, I get it. You're new to these situations that these assholes are putting you in, but you got to learn quick. You got to learn real quick. Your safety and your life always comes first. Kick them out. Like, who cares? Take the hit. Now, if there's one thing that I can let you know from the situation is that the first to complain to Uber or Lyft about a situation is going to have the upper hand. So you may not know this, but just end the ride. Or let's just say they comply and you go to finish it. Whatever. Finish the ride. Rate them one star. Immediately stop new request. Just hit the stop button on that and go into the trip and report a safety concern immediately to Uber and Uber or Lyft and let them know that they try to put five, six, you know, uh, spice up the, you know, the situation, make it look a little worse. Say, hey, I felt like I was threatened. I felt like I had to do this. They weren't listening. They were just, you know, talking over to me. They were belligerent. They were drunk. And just let them know all of that. And trust me. You don't have to worry about them reporting you and kicking you off the platform. It's just one time. And if you can beat them to the report, which you will, because they're drunk, they're not going to do it immediately. They're probably just going to go back, drink some more and make fun of you, to be honest with you, that you're some low life, which you're not. You're out there either supporting your family, working a second job in the gig industry, trying to make yourself better while they're just you know, college pricks that have nothing better to do with their life and don't understand that, you know, you got bills to pay because they'll be in your situation probably 10 years down the road. I, anyway, I could go on and on about this, as you can see, but don't worry about that. And also don't worry about just one ride going bad to someone to rate you. You are never, ever going to have a perfect rating ever. My ratings on Uber always fluctuate uh, between 4.97 to 4.99 all the time. I used to take it to heart when someone would rate me one, two, three stars. It is what it is. Now, I really wish that Uber would let you know what you specifically did wrong. So, you know, I could be like, all right, I will do better next time in that situation. I'll learn from it, use different tactics. Or I can just say, ah, well, you know, that was an asshole. They were probably going to rate me bad anyway because they're having a bad day and I was pretty assertive. And also with Lyft, you know, I always fluctuate between, you know, 4.9 to 5. You know, uh, their rating system is a little bit different. But you're never going to be perfect. So don't worry about that. Don't have that as an excuse to let people walk all over you. Never let people walk all over you because they can sniff it out 
from the beginning that they get in your car, that they're going to be able to walk all over you. They're going to be able to tell you to do whatever you, whatever they want you to do. And then, you know what? They're going to laugh at you when they get back to the house. Anyway, the article continues. But knowing they could rape me now, I wanted to try and handle it in the most diplomatic way possible. So they wouldn't have additional reasons to give me a one-star rating. Dude, they're probably going to give you a one-star rating anyway. And again, you know, who cares about your pride? You're never going to see these people again. And if you have a dash camera, the best justice is to put those assholes on blast, put them on social media, put them on YouTube, and let the world see how they are. Anyway, article continues. Finally, the kid in the front seat made his best offer. He said, if you take us, I'll give you a really big tip. <laughs> We've all heard that before, man. I'll give you a really big tip at the end of this ride. It, it never happens. Nine out of ten times, never happens. Actually, the people who say that are the cheapest assholes on earth. Article continues, to which I replied, how are you going to give a big enough tip to compensate me in the case a cop does pull us over and gives me a ticket for this, which would then lead me to being deactivated by Uber for at least the next three years until this violation expires for my record. Yes, this guy actually, or, or girl, had the kahunas to stick up for themselves and to tell this rider where to shove it. And the driver continues to talk back. And how are you going to give me a big enough tip to compensate me for higher insurance rates I'll have to pay for the next few years as a result of this ticket? With that, he realized I wasn't going to change my mind, so he motioned for his buddies to get out. Phew. That ended relatively drama-free. But a few minutes later, I got a notice on the Uber driver app telling me someone had complained that I had acted in an unprofessional manner. See, this is what I told you. You have to make the safety complaint first. If you ever have a situation like this, no matter how small or how big, you contact Uber and you let them know because... It's not worth getting this on your Uber and Lyft record because you only have so many before they deem something is wrong. You contact them first. Who cares about the rides coming in? It's a busy night. It's not worth it. Anyway, the article continues. Upon checking my rating, it had sure enough gone down by the exact amount it would have gone down if someone had left me one star. Who cares? Who cares? It's one ride out of 500. If you're a good enough driver, this would not matter. Every Uber driver out there in the world knows that out of 500 rides, you're never going to see eye to eye with everyone and have a perfect rating. There is no way. Let's just say even if you did every single thing that a passenger asked you to do and you had no balls to stick up for yourself, they would still, still give you a one star and laugh at your ass because that is how narcissistic some of these passengers are. So stick up for yourself, be assertive, and let go of your ego and pride when it comes to being a driver. The article continues. I try to contact Uber to let them know the reason they gave me one star is because I wouldn't break the law for them. Uber, as usual, didn't care. Well, they're not going to care. They got plenty of things going on. Plus, to be honest with you, these messaging and call centers are overseas in different countries. They're not going to understand the American culture or any other culture where someone's driving. Next story called The Dangerous. I mentioned that it falls to drivers to enforce any laws that are relevant during a rideshare trip. It also falls to drivers to enforce any rules Uber itself may impose on passengers. That is true. It continues. Recently, Uber issued a new rule requiring all drivers and all passengers to wear face masks during the Uber trips. Well, Post that rule, because it's June 2022, and Uber and Lyft, depending on your jurisdiction, had lifted those face mask requirements in April and May of 2022. I am kind of glad that we can just move on from wearing the face mask, because I hated being a face mask police. To be honest with you, I only, it, I, I only did it for a few weeks. It wasn't worth it. You can search YouTube and watch so many videos on drivers just politely asking their rider passenger to put on the face mask or to wear it above the nose. And the passenger, it's called projection. They had a bad day, so they're projecting all of their crap onto you that happened to them in life or the day. And they are going to assault you. They are going to demean you and they're just going to verbally assault you as well. 
and I just got tired of it. After a few weeks, I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm not, I'm not getting in this situation. I had a few dings on my ratings from it. Um, a few complaints to Uber saying that I said things. It wasn't true. Again, going back to the prior stories, it's all about de-escalation. And it's all about reporting the safety concern first. However, in this situation, yes, I was being assertive. Yes, I was sticking up for myself. But at the same time, it just wasn't worth it. There was too many belligerent passengers out there that didn't want to wear the mask. Way too many of them. And I felt that no matter what, I was putting myself at risk every single time I asked the passenger to put on a mask. I just didn't feel like it was worth, and not to sound hypocritical with what I was talking about, about being assertive, but there's also a point where being assertive will put yourself more at risk and your life is not worth that risk of just telling someone to wear a mask. If that makes any sense. So I stopped asking passengers to wear a mask. Plus on top of that, I've had conversations with other drivers and also my wife where if you're going to put yourself in a situation of picking up 30 plus passengers a day and 100 plus passengers a week, a mask isn't really going to do anything inside a vehicle. At that point, it, it is what it is. It's not worth getting verbally or physically assaulted over a mask. So I just let that one go. Anyway, story continues. That strikes me as a reasonable requirement during the COVID-19 pandemic because we drivers may have up to 15 to 20 people in our car in a single day. We are cooped up with them in a very small space with no ventilation, making it the ideal conditions for the virus to spread. And like I just said, if you're going to put yourself in a situation with dealing with hundreds of strangers a week, just give up on forcing passengers to wear a mask. There's just no point. Anyway, story continues. Literally, the first passenger I picked up on Monday morning after the new rule went into effect didn't have a face mask with them. I told them, no mask, no ride. They started yelling at me. But fortunately for me, this time, I did not start the trip before everything settled, so I knew I could cancel, in which it would leave them with no way to give me a bad rating or even complain about me. Again, stop worrying about the rating. Again, drivers, stop worrying about your rating. Worry about the safety complaint first, and then getting yourself out of a dangerous situation. You're never going to have a perfect rating. Ratings don't really matter unless you're a really bad driver and you're below 4.9 on Uber, 4.85. Ratings don't matter. Safety concerns matter. Your life matters. It continues. As part of Uber's new face mask rule, they have also said they are no longer going to count trip cancellations against drivers. So we are free to cancel as much as we want now. The next passenger that day was wearing a face mask, but had pulled it down below his nose, which is basically the same as not wearing a mask at all. I don't understand why people even bother with the mask in the first place if they are not going to cover both their mouth and nose, but this guy was one of those guys. So I asked him nicely if he would mind pulling it up to cover his nose. He looked annoyed but complied to appease me. I asked him if he would feel safe riding around with me cooped up in my car if my mouth and nose weren't both covered and he said no. But of course, he left me a low rating. Again, we talk about de-escalation. You asserted yourself properly by telling him to pull it up over his nose, ask him politely, be assertive. But this is where you escalated the matter. But then you asked him a condescending question, asking him if the roles were reversed, would he feel comfortable? Well, obviously he would since he wasn't wearing it over his nose, but you didn't have to ask that condescending question because... You got to think as drivers, we hate when passengers do that to us to escalate a situation into a full-blown argument where we don't want it. So just be assertive and say thank you. Say, hey, thanks for pulling up over your nose. I appreciate it. Maybe it would have saved you a low rating or not. Who cares? But again, don't worry about the rating. Be assertive, de-escalate, move on. The story continues. The thing about Uber rules is it's up to the driver to enforce them, but drivers put themselves in jeopardy of getting bad ratings if they do not enforce them. Again, stop worrying about the ratings. I sound like a broken record. Story continues. But this COVID-19 rule, I am definitely going to enforce. I am not going to take unnecessary risk with my health or my life to drive for Uber. Now, I really don't want to get into the nuts and bolts of the pandemic and wearing a mask 
during the pandemic because I don't want this video to get flagged. Let me just break it down real quick in words that won't get this video flagged. You're in a confined space with 30 plus passengers a day, 100 plus passengers a week if you do this full time. And you think that just wearing a mask is going to keep you from getting sick. No, I have had the virus twice since the pandemic started because of Ubering and I wore a mask the entire time. So you are indirectly putting your health and life at risk Number one, by driving for Uber during a pandemic. And number two, by arguing with people you don't know and you don't know how dangerous they are and forcing them to wear a mask. Anyway, article continues. And I am no longer going to put myself in a position to get bad ratings from passengers who don't want to do the right thing and wear a mask and wear them properly. Again, stop worrying about your damn rating. It doesn't matter. From now on, whenever a passenger walks up to my car, either without a mask or with one, but one that's not worn properly, I'm just going to cancel the trip and drive off. That's probably the smartest thing that you have written in this section. Anyway, continues. The minute you so much as ask these people to do the right thing, you know you are going to get a bad rating. I'm only going to take people who don't have to be asked. You know what I'm going to say. Again, don't worry about the rating. As long as I haven't tapped start trip, they can never rate me. And it may anger them to no end, and they may be shouting and screaming at me as I drive off, but there's no retribution. They can't take it out against. Me. Well, you better hope that you can get the hell out of there as fast as possible because I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where someone has ended a ride like that and tried to drive off, but then they were stopped at a stop sign got a red light trying to get out of the you know the area and you know people can run pretty fast and uh you know threw rocks at the car went up kicked it so i mean you're kind of putting yourself in a situation there as well too so damned if you do damned if you don't however thank god that uber and lyft have stopped enforcing the, the, the face mask mandate in most regions so far anyways that's all for today be sure to comment down below and let me know what you think about this Hit the like button to promote this channel, and please subscribe to my channel for more crazy rideshare stories to come. Thank you for watching. Please check out my channel and subscribe, and if you have done so already, I shall see you in the next episode.